In this video, we'll discuss about matrix and vector operations and how they're implemented into MATLAB. So MATLAB is basically built around vectors and arrays. And so a lot of the operations that MATLAB does are already natively set up to work with matrices and vectors. For example, things like plus, which you can use to add two numbers, can also be used to add two vectors or add two matrices. Times, or the asterisk, multiplies two numbers, but also performs matrix multiplication on two matrices. Since we can't multiply vectors by each other, this will give an error if you try to put two vectors in here, which is what you would expect for MATLAB because that doesn't work for computation as well. If you want to do stuff with vectors or a different kind of multiplication, you can use dot asterisk, so a period before the asterisk, and that will do element-wise multiplication. This one here requires two matrices to be the exact same size, whereas the matrix multiplication here requires that condition about the inner dimensions must match. Even if they're not the same size overall, the inner ones must match. But for element-wise, it must be the exact same dimension. And we have similar operations for exponentials. This does matrix powers. And dot caret, or dot exponential, does element-wise exponentiation. You may ask about a dot plus, but it turns out this operation is already done element-wise, so we don't need a new one to account for that as well. You'll get to experiment with all these over the course of the lab, so I'm doing examples here, but these are the ideas that you'll be looking at as these are operations, what they do and how they behave on matrix. In addition, there are built-in functions in MATLAB to deal with matrix in particular. And the two big ones you will see in this lab are the DET function for determinants and the EIG function for eigenvalues and eigenvectors. If we jump over to MATLAB, we can use the help points to see how these two work. If I look at the determinant function, it basically just says if we put in a square matrix into here, it will just give us the determinant straight up as a number, and that's great. The eigenvalue function is a little more particular. If you just call it with a single matrix, it will give you a column vector of just the eigenvalues. But if you want the eigenvectors as well, you have to take two outputs here, V and D. D is a diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues, and V has columns that correspond to that are the eigenvectors corresponding to those eigenvalues in the same order. So we have to play with this more over the course of the lab, but if you want to get both the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors, you actually need to do a two output V and D here in order to store the appropriate things to get everything, all the information you need from this function to be able to actually attack the problems at hand. So there's a brief introduction to operations in MATLAB that work with matrices as well as numbers themselves and these built-in functions that you're going to be using over the course of the lab. The lab itself will walk you through experimenting with these, seeing how they behave, seeing how they all work out. You'll get some time to play with these, and it'll be better for you to see how they work in the lab as you work with them rather than me just go through an example here. So that's the basic overview. You should be able to experiment now in the lab and see how all these things behave within MATLAB for handling matrices, vectors, determinants, and all these eigenvalue types of problems.